99 Jazz Mommy's number one for hip hop and RB. You know how we do it. It's the afternoon get down, commercial free driving five with a tough guy, DJ and Tice. Your girl, Super Cindy, and live in the studio, it's a special edition of the Drive at Five. We That's right. got. Two chains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> welcome to chains. Thank you for having me. And, and welcome to Trappy. You brought your dog. Yeah, yeah. He, <laughs> he go everywhere with me. What's going on? We are so happy to have you live in the studio. Yeah. Your new album, rap or go to the league. That's right. Okay, we're gonna break it down. We're gonna talk about it. Let's talk about it. How you feeling the vibes of the new album? Oh, um, man, you're getting so much positive feedback, so much great feedback everywhere I go. It's just, you know, a different song, a, a different subject matter. So I just appreciate all the love, you know, man. I do it I do it for this, you know what I mean? And each album, I try to make a better project than the last. And I think Rapper Go to the League, well, I know it's the best project I ever put together in my whole life. Period. Because you in Miami, period. Oh, period, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and Tice, yeah. we're going to do a damn thing with the driving fire. All right. Oh, we're going to do something real major today. We're going to play a lot of music. We're going to play some new music. Let's we got to talk a lot about the album. I want to know a lot about why LeBron James has the A&R. Uh, he just has a... Uh he has something that he has called more than an athlete, which is kind of aligned with rapper go to the league. Rapper go to the league was more or less trying to get uh, people of my 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 fabric of my culture to understand that we can actually do more than just do music uh, or have a, a, a jump shot. So it was more or less clickbait, but the album speaks on a wide range of things, and LeBron just aligned up with that. Two chains. Can you explain how that whole thing happened? Like out of right. everybody in the world, how did LeBron? Like, how did you even know that he had the capabilities to be the A and R? Who what, had the what, first what, conversation? What, 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 like, he, he, he didn't have to turn any knobs. He didn't have to pick any beats. <laughs> he didn't have to write any raps. You know oh, what I'm okay, saying? Okay, okay. I think when you talk about A and R, you have to understand that it's more of a vibe thing when it comes to uh, LeBron. It's more of having an outside ear. You know what I mean? To actually hear songs that the world hasn't heard yet, and I over recorded for the album, so it was more or less a thing with, which involved narrowing down the music, having conversations about concepts and substance and things of that oh. matter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he does what he does well, is which is play basketball and entertain, and I do what I do well, which is, you know, music and entertain, and we thought we could cross the lines. Why not? There are no rules against that. Okay, now you've explained it. Now I get it. Because I was like, how did did he just pick the songs and what did he do? No, nah, nah, I picked my songs, darling. I mean, <laughs> y- y- you in music. You know what's going on. Okay, Come on, Cindy. The you know listeners don't on. know. <laughs> you know what's going on, Cindy. I got to ask you the know, question you know, for the no, listeners. No, nah, nah, so it's, it's, it's a concept. It's an mm-hmm. idea. Rapper go to the league. I mean, the best player in the world is LeBron. And he he's used this platform for different different things on a positive note you know what i mean and and we all seen him organically support hip-hop music okay. every week he's always you know voicing his opinion on songs that he likes so i had an idea i called him he was down with it people can't believe it was that easy or it happened that <laughs> fast but it really did wow and, and i appreciate him for that wow we so touche so too. he a and r'd your album are you going to coach his team next? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what I want. That's the question. They got Luke Walton over there, man. For now, anyway, I, don't, I mean, I would love to coach, actually, sometime. <laughs> I, but I just can't be yelling and stuff on the sideline. You would be like, how would you do it? Like whispering? I need one of them bullhorns or something. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Now, this is one of, like, your fifth album. And it's an album that everybody is saying that you truly opened up in this album. Yeah. Why did it take to the fifth album for you to really, like, was it you, your growth, you getting married? Like, what What was it? I think it was all of the above. You know, uh-huh. time heals a lot of wounds, you know. Um, for me, music is therapeutic, so it was important for me to express myself on this album. Um, definitely give them a, uh, a little bit more personal side on why I'm so to myself and mind my business. And it was just a few things that came out. Uh, through some of the, the the great production that made me express myself in a different way than I would normally. And so this album, like I said, has more substance to it. It carries more weight and, and, and it's definitely going to have more longevity to it. So yeah. let's talk a little bit more about the album. And Tice, you're playing the joints. Yeah, we're going to be playing a, a lot of the new joints in a minute. But, you know, we're going to get into the new one, Rule the World featuring Ariana Grande. Yeah. How'd you get liked up with Ariana? Uh, yeah, it just, um, we end up in the studio together, you know, we end up in the studio together. We, you know, had little conversations and some vibes and we cut a few records together. And this was, was one that just felt good from the top and 
is doing very well at radio. So, but I remember like when Pretty Girls like trap music. That was like one of my top five albums of all time. I Thank love you. that album. Thank mm-hmm. you so much. Yeah, but when she came out with her video, you were like, "Wait a minute, that looks like my trap house." Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, and, I mean, it was similar and everything. But you mm-hmm. know, obviously, I didn't make up the color pink or anything. But aesthetically, it, it reminded me of mine. Um, I wasn't petty about it, but, mm-hmm. you know, as the world ha- has it, we were able to get in the room and have a discussion about how I inspired that, and we were able to move on and, and make hits together. So That Trap House inspired a lot, though, because yeah, it, it was like there was pink. You know, I grew up in Miami in a pink house that was on the corner. Are you for real? Yeah, I, my house was pink. Everybody <laughs> knew. Hard. So when you came out with the pink Trap House, I was like, ew. Uh, who but painted my, your house pink? Your mom? My dad. <laughs> your dad? Your dad? He hard. <laughs> Back in the day, but like my house wasn't a trap house, but like how? Why mm-hmm, do you? <laughs> mm-hmm. Wow! No, no, well, no. Everybody know this way it's at. Come to the pink house on the corner. What's the address? Just look for the pink house. No, no. But like, why do you think that pink house, your trap house, inspired like the movement across the country? Because it wasn't just where the where your pink trap house was. Well, I think it was more symbolic and. The fact that I started making trap a positive connotation, just not like a place where you just go buy drugs yeah. and go to jail and or die. I started telling people like, um, like this radio station, this is your trap. You know, beauty mm-hmm. salon is a trap. Wherever you basically work, get your income, feed your family, that's your trap. So after I changed the connotation and made people want to participate in it, and then you know I actually had some some things that were tangible you could go to this trap house you can see art you can see different things i held i held church there i held uh, i mean i did um we we did hiv screenings there we did a, a number of things in this particular trap house so it wasn't looked at as like a place to go buy drugs anymore yeah and and it was just a beautiful pink it was a great pink that i picked and uh you know people just you know obviously used it and, and that's what inspiration is about i ain't mad at that were people going to do photo shoots in front of the house like all, oh, all the time? No doubt about it. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> Selfie <laughs> time. No doubt about it. So what mm. made you um what made you know you was gonna be a rapper instead of a basketball player? Uh I just knew I was gonna be an entertainer since I was young. I could always change the climate of a room. When I walk in, I always, you know, demand a certain attention. I always felt a certain energy. Um basketball was my first love, but Early on, I knew I wasn't going to the league with basketball because of whether it was my work ethic or my lack of the love for the game. Um, as I, you know, I've been playing since I was seven years old. So, okay, as I started getting older and hustling and messing with girls and, and doing <laughs> got sidetracked, doing everything else, you know. But basketball, basketball put you through college, correct? Like yeah, you got a scholarship. I got a scholarship. Yeah, I got a scholarship playing basketball. I got a pretty good jump shot, you know, and I'm pretty okay. knowledgeable of the game, and I'm educated as well. So. I would have had an academic scholarship either way. I I think your education in college definitely helped you with the way you do your business because you have, like, grown from titty boy to two chains, like, and then you have fashion. Your TV show is one of my most favorite, most expensive. She loves that show. I love that show. Yeah, (laughs) most expensive. It's uh, the number one, currently the number one um, TV show on Viceland. We're about to um, finish up, wrap up another season. Um, I'm looking forward to it. We got a lot of great new content. It's an it's a um it's an entertaining show, man. It's definitely dope. is. Yeah, Have you ever dope. purchased anything that you featured on the most expensive? <laughs> no doubt about it. I, I've been given things obviously for free, and I've I've <laughs> you know they played a little hard nose on me, and I've had to purchase some things too. But mm-hmm. I mean, it's intriguing. You know, I, I pretty much don't know what I'm going into. It's very improv, and I'm just trying to figure out why people pay so much for for some of these things yeah (laughs) wait so when you walk in you don't know what it is that you're going oh that's dope i didn't know that part of it Mm. i thought you were just playing along or something no i really be looking like man what the hell (laughs) i figured you would have definitely bought the Jimi hendrix jacket nah 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 i didn't buy like i saw the prince you know i saw all of those things but like some of that stuff is just priceless and shouldn't be in my possession anyway It'd okay. be in the truck of the lamb and the truck of the right it'd be in the trunk or something like i'm not good with that kind of stuff so Two chains. I love the way you say it. Oh, oh, yeah. Say my name too. Hey. <laughs> I'm, I'm two chains. You know, I'm, okay. I'm a little bit. When I'm on stage, I, I think I give it to them how they want it. But like on the, on you the radio, right people now. be want me to come in here and do my ad libs and, <laughs> and be smooth and stuff. I, I come in here on my smooth 
Monica, you know what I'm saying? I'm just chilling right now. But I'm happy to be here. I need me some finger lick ASAP. Hey, E-Class, get it ready. Yeah, Tasha. Uh, I need me some of them little, little lobster tail, little joints right there. Oh, you you go to the serious joints. You're the, you're the most expensivest, so you go straight to the lobster. <laughs> oh, you thought I was playing. <laughs> I, I, I see you're oh, not yeah, playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know what? I wanted to ask you, like, you went from Titty Boy to 2 Chains. Like, what made you change your name? That was years ago. But, mm-hmm. like, how did you become from two- Titty Boy? What made you change your name from Titty Boy? I think it was organic. I never intentionally planned on changing my name. I was going by Titty 2 Chains, Titty 2 Necklace. Oh, that's I was right. going by all these little, you know, names and everything. And it just organically happened. It made more sense. And it, and it helped my quality of life in the music industry. You know what I mean? Extended. Mm-hmm. You know, some radio stations would say it. Some people wouldn't. wouldn't. Some people felt offended because they didn't even try to see the, seek the, the meaning, which I understood. And then mm-hmm. people really wouldn't even uh, give me a chance. And I know I've been dope, you know, my entire time doing this. And so it just feels good to be getting recognized for some of the things I love to do, which is which is music. And that was just a smart decision to do. I mean, you know, when you went to the Met Gala and proposed to your fiance at the time, who is mm-hmm. now your wife, mm-hmm. um, that like kind of opened the door to another whole group of fans because whether they knew your music or not, the fact that you proposed to your girl on the Met Gala mm-hmm. carpet, yeah, that was like, really. who's that guy? And they started Googling you and finding you out. And then your mm-hmm. wedding was amazing yeah yeah everything was just um last year was a great year for me um mm-hmm. i would hope people knew who i was at the well Met you know Gala. i'm talking about the like <laughs> that ain't sin i'm, I'm, I'm sorry. doing all right. <laughs> so, i so, met the I'm like Met right. gala people who Sin, don't I'm know doing, rap. Sin, I'm doing all right. Now my album went number one and stuff. I'm, doing pretty, I'm doing pretty good. Sin, it's G. Like, I know my a lot bad. of people didn't, didn't didn't know who the hell you were until that day <laughs> <laughs> that's a lie I'm popping out here, Sin. I did not mean Man, it like that. Sin, I have to have security in there. I can barely use the bathroom, baby. I'm popping out here. You can't go nowhere. In the, in the most humbling way now. Don't let me go too big. But yeah, but now, uh, yeah, but now, but yeah, you know, everything is like. <laughs> He's like, shut up, I'm doing, yeah, yeah, don't do me like that. I'm, I didn't uh, mean it like that. You just I said I had that. a TV show. I got LeBron. I got For all this real? going on. You tell me these folks don't know who I am? Man, these folks know exactly who I am. Any table that I met, I'm on a more serious note. Any table, I'm talking about any table that I met, I'm supposed to be there. I'm not, Hello? I don't stick out. You dig what I'm saying? I've done the, the, the proper work, the footwork, the groundwork. I've put in enough prayer hours to wherever that you see me at. Mm-hmm. It's not an accident. I'm supposed to be there. I love it, and I apologize. I didn't mean it like that. I meant it like I don't know what I meant. Okay, forget me. No, no, it's not. No, you know, me and you go a long way. <laughs> yes. with the Utmost respect. I love what you're doing. I always thank have. You. We family. You Aww, just showed me a you. clip Aww. from 2009. So <laughs> okay, and I still was looking like I was. You know, that was the 10 year challenge. We need to put that up. I look oh, good on damn, that. Damn, I should have. I look good on that. My hair was yeah. long. I cut my hair, but my hair was long on there and everything. So. For the listeners that don't know, I just showed Two Chains a video that I took of him when I was with Tony Neal on Ocean Drive. I'm Memorial Day yeah. weekend, um, and it was yeah. a video with you yeah. from 2009. I was and looking like a snack on that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 2000. Let's talk about your marijuana business. Yeah, all this going on, and these folk don't know me now. <laughs> I'm selling legal pot. I'm yes. selling legal pot. I have 96. It's in 96 dispensaries on on, on another note in California. I have mm-hmm. a product called Gas, and I have 87, 89, and 93. It's um cannabis. It's some um. It's some indicas, you know, and and it's doing it's doing it's doing very well for me. So that's another thing that I ventured off in. It was something that I did when it wasn't legal. Mm-hmm. So it feels good to be, <laughs> to be legal, to participate in it right now. So I have that. Um, I just dropped the shoe with uh, Versace, the chain yes. reaction. Yes, what is I that? Talk, Talk about that. It's a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that is. That's what that is. So you know, um, Versace. You know, the two chain reaction. That's a cool thing. And the album, we got a well. Um, I think one of the um, one of the more well put together albums that's dropped in a while. You know, definitely. Um, from top to bottom, I have this no skip rule on the album. So you just play it all the way through. And I think it kind of it was a good thing. It was kind of gift and a curse because now we're trying to figure out what record we should go with, which is our, obviously this Ariana record. But I have so many great songs on there. It's just like we can go with this one in this region or go with this one tonight or tomorrow. But it just feels good to be able to put together a project that top to bottom is is flawless. Definitely and speaking of flawless. the album, um, you got a song called NCAA. Mm-hmm. You talking some talk on there. 
Yeah. Like, what's the real message about that record? Yeah, the real message is about uh, paying the student athletes. That's the real message behind it. You know, we have a lot of people that are basically, in my opinion, we just in a in a new form of slavery, right? You got the schools mm. that get over a billion dollars that they don't have to pay taxes on. You get kids that go out there and literally break their necks for something they obviously love. It's not like I'm just saying they only do it for the school. They do it for themselves too, you know? It's a passion, but... um some of them don't reap any other benefits, you know what I mean, from selling their churches, from being included in a video game, just so many other things. You barely can, like, at, you know, get a meal outside of campus or some tennis shoes. They, they've they kicked players out for, for tennis shoes and, and just it, just stuff like that. So um, my knowledge of sports and me just watching kids, like, obviously have to deal with it because, like I said, I've been playing since I was seven. Imagine somebody playing since they was seven, going to college, and then not going to the pros, but love something so and have to figure out what they're going to do with their life. But mm. if they had a little something put to the side, maybe they can work on a small business or Hello? just a trade or something. But, you know, who am I? Um, who, am, <laughs> who are you to say that? Uh, You're two chains. <laughs> who them folks don't know me, Cindy. You know that. You just said everybody <laughs> knew you. They know you. And you you pushing a message like that it's not just music and athletics that, that you know. Absolutely. For the, for the African American community, absolutely that they they got to know that there's other things. That's a absolutely. big thing that you're doing right there because a lot of people do think it's just music. I got to be a rapper. I got to be a football player. Whatever it is. Yeah, man. I mean, that's that's it's in, it's that social media, man. You know, mm -hmm. you know, the social media is just it's just whew, it's so deep. You know, you look at it, you see people with jewelry and they smoking and they have nice cars and you think like it happened overnight, you know, it took me almost 10 years to be an overnight success. So it's just, it didn't happen just it, quickly. No, nah, you know, <laughs> it's just crazy. And you have to put in so much work. I mean, you know, sleep deprivation is the primary thing you have to deal with getting three or four hours of sleep, just running on fumes and just trying to outwork everybody. Everybody's trying to do the same thing. What makes you stand mm -hmm. out? What makes you different? Definitely. Well, two chains. We want to wrap this up. Thank you so much for stopping by. Make sure all of you, you go check out rap or go to the league and go check out if you haven't. Pretty girls like trap music. That's my thing right there. <laughs> okay. And follow him. Make sure. When do you know when um the most expensive is season three starts? Um, no, but I'm gonna tell you. Be the first to know. Super. Soon. Please, I will break the dirt <laughs> when it comes first, out. Two chains said so. Be the first to know. Thank you so much for stopping by. You know Miami loves you. The afternoon get down. DJ and Tice. Yeah, and you know what we're going to do? We're going to play Rule the World one more time. My, woo, my, woo, my, woo. my boy right there. <laughs> we go way back. <laughs>